Welcome to the official post show for the Who's Number One Championships. I'm your host, Hollywood Mike. Uh, Kyle, can we turn this damn music off in my head? I can't hear anything. But I'm your host, Hollywood Mike. In the middle, Gordon and Ryan join me on the far right. We have Tom DeBlast. Crazy first session, guys, to set up the semifinals for tonight. Uh, I'm going to kick it off with you first. I think sort of the theme of this first session was upsets. There was a lot of big upsets. What do you think was the biggest upset of the day, Gordon? Um, the way that the match was played out, I think I have to go with Gabby and Amanda. Um, yeah. I, I don't think anyone saw Amanda. I mean, I know Amanda. She's part of Ricardo's team, and you know, she's been training with us forever. Um, so I know that she's very tough, and she's she's won trials. She's done she's done some stuff, but uh, she's not a she's not a, a name like Gabby. So I think that that's definitely one of the biggest ones. Another one, obviously, is Mikey getting submitted. Um, but uh, if, if I had to pick one, it would probably be Amanda and Gabby. Yeah, Amanda's from your guys' neck of the woods, right? She's, uh, I think, Henzo Gracie affiliated in some way. And, uh, Tom, what did you think about this match? I mean, there was a lot of uh, trash talk sort of between them at the press conference. People were really looking forward to the match, and Amanda delivered, took her back more than, more than once. I think uh, I was really surprised with Gabby's game plan, right? Like, I don't know why she pulled guard to begin with. I, 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 w I wonder if there was, like, an injury or something that made her think she should pull guard. I don't ever recall her pulling guard before. Uh, and then she, Amanda took her back, and I believe she pulled guard again. You know, Amanda's tough, man, everywhere, and she's exceptionally strong, and she's she's not going to break, right? Like, she's not going to break the pressure. Uh, but that game plan, I think, was just really wrong by Gabby. Like, uh, you know, the, the moment she pulled guard and Amanda passed, like, immediately, I think she should have uh, – and then she kept getting reversed, right? So she would stand up, and she got tripod swept, like, three times. Uh when something doesn't work, like the first or second time, you have to switch things up immediately. I think it was just a huge surprise for Gabby, and the element of surprise probably caught her off guard. But that being said, Gabby is still, you know, she's yeah. queen, right? She's uh, she's phenomenal, and props to Amanda. Amazing. That, that's what's great about tournaments, right? You see it at ADCC, the opportunity to have these, these, these big upsets. Like uh, another one you said, Gabriel Souza went out, passed Mikey Musumeci's guard twice, submitted him with the north-south. So what, what do you think about that match watching it? Yeah, I was actually um – I was actually very surprised that Mikey didn't do a better job controlling movement. Um, he actually allowed Gabriel to get past his hip line and past his shoulder line a lot of times. Um, and that's, I don't care who you are, that's tiring to deal with. Um, and then uh, once he actually got his guard passed, I wasn't too surprised that he got finished because uh, we haven't really got to see Mikey fight out of bad positions too often. Uh, I think the one time that I recall him, and maybe there's more times, the one time I recall him uh, getting passed, he was like doing the heavyweight division to pants, yeah. and he got finished then too. Um, so we haven't seen Mikey uh, in, in terms of pin escapes and submission escapes. So once he actually did get passed, I wasn't too surprised that he got submitted, but I was surprised that he got passed. Yeah, and it's crazy. You don't really, I mean, like you said, we've seen Mikey get passed in uh, the absolute division. You don't really see Mikey get passed in, in uh, guys around his way. Yes. Tom, what, what do you think about this, Matt? Man. You know, Mikey doesn't have that much Nogi experience. I know he's a world uh, a Nogi world champion, but he just recently stepped back into the Nogi game. And uh, I think maybe he got a little comfortable. You know, maybe he, you know, because he had two dominating performances, I think, before this. And, uh, again, when you give a position to a high-level guy or a high-level girl, you know, they're taught to finish from that. So you have to be... You know, like I tell my students, you know, I know everybody hates advantages, and we hate advantages in WNO, right? But if we look at advantages as like, all right, that's half of getting to the guard pass. That's that's half of the game to where you need to be, you know? And you're giving up position. You know, the easiest way to get submitted is to give up position, right? And, uh, you know, Mikey's a stud, man. He's young. I think this is a learning experience for him. And I think it definitely shows, like, you know, if you believe in yourself, right, and uh, you do have the skill to back it up, anything could happen because no one thought that would happen, you know. I don't want to say I was, like, surprised because in this game, I've learned never to be surprised. Anything could happen, you know. Uh, I would be surprised if someone came out and did this to this guy. Uh, other than that, for the most part, I, I think anything is possible. And I think Suza sh so, uh, showed that, you know. Yeah. It's pretty wild. Yeah, man, uh, you know, star-making performance for him for sure. And I think another uh, one that I think he was the biggest dog out of all the first-round match matchups on the betting lines as far as they go. The Jacob Couch, the hillbilly hammer, oh, man. submits Roberto Jimenez in I think <laughs> under five minutes. Uh, Gordon, what's, what's your take on that match? Uh, so, yeah, we actually talked about this the other day in the podcast saying that uh, if Roberto was given a good draw, he could do very well. Um, but if he's if he has to go against someone with decent leg locks, he's going to have an issue. Um, and that's exactly what we saw today. Um, you know, he came out, and um, I was really impressed uh, that he wasn't able to get to uh, Hillbilly Hammer's uh, uh, back. Um, he actually he, he was deep in a leg entanglement and actually created some decent, uh, decent back exposure where normally he does get to the back. Um, but he did a great job of re-pommeling the legs, getting his back to the floor, 
and then eventually actually inverted heel hook to Molly was standing, which it actually looked like a pretty bad break because it was a gravity break. Like as he was falling, he got broken and tapped. Um, so it looked like it popped pretty bad, unfortunately. Yeah, I think Roberto, there's a chance he might be out of the constellation tomorrow. I think he had a little trouble getting out of here today. Tom, what do you feel about that match with Hillbilly Hammer? Obviously a big win for him. Hey, he, all those kids are studs, man. You know, the Daisy Fresh guys I vibe with, they come from nothing, you know, and they're just, they're dogs out there, and they have nothing to lose. There's nothing you could do to them that hasn't been done to them already in life, right? So they're never going to come in intimidated. They're never going to come in scared. And they have skill, right? They have skill, and, and we know uh, Couch has good leg locks. You know he's not going to be intimidated. He's a big stud of a kid. He's a horse, man. He's strong, you know, and I think, I most likely think Roberto probably thought, you know, he would kind of edge him. I don't want to say easy, but I think, you know, he thought, okay, I got a good first round draw. I'm going to be okay here. And you can't sleep on these kids, man, you know. And when you give someone that leg and you give them that, like, like uh, Gordon said, he broke him from standing, you know, when you give them that space, it's, it's going to be a problem. You know, yeah. for sure. Yeah, I mean, props to Couch, too, because it, it wasn't like he just got lucky and got it. He got in on a leg, so Roberto sort of got out of it, and Couch kept flowing with it and then finished in another position. So it's like Couch really stuck with it. When, once he locked Roberto down, he, he didn't let him get out of there. And uh, before, I, before I forget about this, we were talking about Mikey before. I think, well, I, was, I, I know, the constellation bracket tomorrow, uh, we're not going to talk about this too much, but he's going with Gio, I think, in his first constellation bracket. So let's talk about the semis. So oh. the, the, the first uh, division of the day was uh, Tex Johnson won by DQ against uh, Orlando Sanchez, power bomb when he was in a triangle. Uh, he's going to go up against Spriggs, who, who tapped Heisem with an inside heel hook. The other side, Kainan kind of Duarte is going to go against your teammate, Giancarlo. Giancarlo lost a very close match, very close decision, but Mason Fowler unable to continue. Giancarlo steps in there. How do you think Giancarlo matches up against Kainan kind of now? Um, I think that uh, you know, Giancarlo is tough. He's very positionally sound um, and can beat anybody on any given day. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what game plan Kainan plays against him um, because he can play top, he can play bottom, and so can Giancarlo. So it's interesting to see how long they're going to wrestle because both of them uh, sometimes are insistent on wrestling and sometimes one of the other sits guard. So it'll be interesting to see that. Tom, on the other side, you had, I mean, a lot of people picked Big O to go through there, but obviously Tex uh, won that match. We're giving Tex a submission bonus, by the way, because he had a submission when when Orlando got DQ'd. What do you think about uh, Tex versus Briggs on the other side and then Tex beating Orlando? You know, I, I messaged text. I was laughing. I said, man, I said, you're, you're catching all these ADCC champions. I said, in our match, you uh, you were running away. I feel good about myself. I was busting his balls, you know. Um, you know, I think Orlando just got a little comfortable. You know, he's a bro. Who, who, I would never think Orlando could get really put in a triangle. He's I would never try huge. it. Huge. I wouldn't try it, man, yeah. you know. Uh, and he's slippery, you know. So I think that was kind of a, a thing that caught him off guard a little bit. Uh you know, Tex is tough, man. He, you know what the thing is with Tex? He's exceptionally strong. And I think if you haven't won against him yet, you don't realize how strong he is. His core is very, very strong. I think he has more in his arsenal than Spriggs does. Uh, I think Spriggs could beat anyone. He's a scrapper. Not, well, not anyone, but he's a scrapper. He's hard to, you know, hold down. He's hard to control. And he does truly believe he'll win. I would have to give the edge in this rule set especially uh, to Tex. You know, he's more submission orientated. He's hard to pass. He has a really good game from everywhere. Uh, you know, he's most likely going to pull guard, of course. And I do believe, uh, I don't think Spriggs is going to be able to pass him and hold him down or just take his back or anything. I think I think Tex will most likely, uh, I think he could catch a submission. You know, I believe so. Gordon, uh, Tex and Spriggs, two good friends of yours. Who you got winning this match in that semifinal? Uh, under this rule set again, just like Tom said, I get, I'm going to give it to Tex. Um, Spriggs, up until about last year, didn't even know a submission. Um, and he hits, he hits on guillotines in ADCC. But other than that, I mean, he's not really known for submitting anybody. So um, uh, Tex will at least be attacking submissions the whole time. And I think that uh, I think could, Tex could easily catch him. I mean, he almost got heel hooked in his first match. Um, yeah. He turned the wrong way to, to avoid an inverted. So if Tex gets in there on his legs, he's, he's going to finish him. If not, uh, at least break him. So uh, the women's heavyweight division is sort of wide open now. Everybody was picking Gabby. Obviously, Gabby is the betting favorite to take this thing. So now you got uh, Amanda Levy, who we talked about. She's going against Rafael Geddes, who beat Elizabeth Clay. On the other side, Anna Carolina, Anna Carolina Vieira uh, topped, tapped uh, Amanda Lone with a kind of Tommy. She's going against Kendall Rusing. Who are you guys looking at to win this bracket? Do you think Amanda Levy, after, after taking that uh, big upset, wins it? Or what do you think, Anna Carolina Vieira? Like, it's sort of wide open now. I agree. I agree. Um, I, I can't really pick 
one person who I would bet money on if I had to bet money. Um, like you said, I think everyone was picking uh, was picking Gabby just because yeah, notoriously of Gabby was, wins everything. Um, but uh, now it's it's a wide open bracket. I, I agree with you. I think all these girls are really tough. Anna Carolina, she beat Amanda Leve in the first round of ADCC uh, in the, the last ADCC. But uh, Raffaella, I mean, she she's really tough, man. She's good from everywhere. Amanda, we've seen what she did today, so I think that's going to be fireworks. Uh, can never rule Kendall out. She's you know she's very strong. She's physical. So her against uh, Vieira is going to be. I, I don't know, man. Yeah. This is really tough. It's going to be a this war. This is probably for sure. like probably one of the closest matchups that I think any you know semifinals have had. So 185 pounds. This is another one that sort of became wide open when Craig pulled out. So you got Ty Ruotolo, who's got probably got to be the favorite now. Uh, he had basically was like a, almost like a flying Darce in his first match. Uh, I think both of those won by Darce, actually. He's going up against Dante. Dante beat him before, but that was a couple years ago. I mean, Ty's a completely different animal now compared to a couple years ago. He's growing. The other side, a, a matchup that everybody's looking forward to, Jacob Couch versus Mika Galvao is a big question mark as well. What do you, what do you, got, what do you, first, what do you think about these two matchups? Dante, Ty, and Mika, and, and Couch. I mean, what, how do you think these go down? Uh, again, I think that's anybody's bracket. Yep, yep. Um, I think that uh, definitely... I'm excited for Mika versus Couch because we'll see how Mika's leg lock defense is. Um, it was great against Taza. I mean, Taza couldn't heal lock him, and Taza's got great leg locks. Um, and he's a great competitor. So, um, again, anyone's match, if I had to put money, I'd probably probably put money on, on Mika um, just because of the fact that he's so experienced. Yeah. Like, I think the best thing about Mika currently. He's so currently, mature, right? As yeah, a competitor. The, the best thing about Mika right now, I think, is his ability to compete. He's yeah. very composed. He competes excellent. Um, so I would give the give the advantage to Micah, but I wouldn't count out uh, the hillbilly hammer. That's, that's something I was talking with Sean Williams about earlier, is just the maturity, the composure of some of these young athletes, the Ruotolos, Mika Galval, Colabate, who we'll talk about in a minute. Like these young competitors who've been killing it since they're four, five, six years old, like they go out there and they're just they're pros, man. It's crazy, man. I think, uh, I think a big thing is going to depend on whether Jacob, with his victory today, did it pump him up to, to make him like say hey man like I could win this division or does he feel a little bit satisfied right if he feels the slightest bit satisfied he's going to lose uh, the difference between Jacob and Taza I think Taza is a better technician but Jacob is more physical and he's stronger and he's bigger than Taza so I believe he could give Mika some fits with the leg lock game for sure I believe Jacob could absolutely win I think uh, Rotolo Man, uh, you know, Dante is solid everywhere. I think just Rotolo is just becoming a man. You know, like he is he is a, a, a big kid now, a strong kid. He's very confident. He's shown uh, exceptional leg lock defense in the past now. So I think he's going to be, you know, really, I mean, Dante is a good wrestler, but I just think Rotolo in this rule set as well, you know, he's thrown up submissions from everywhere. He's yeah. going to be really hard to beat. Yeah, it'll be interesting. I think, that, I think they're both, both going to want to get on top. Uh, Dante's shots look slick against Blank, but, I mean, Ty can, Ty, Ty's scrappy. He can scramble. And he he's can, tough to take down. He can hit those Darces from everywhere, yep, man. Yep. It's crazy. Yep. Uh, all right, so moving on along to women's 115-pound division, one of the best divisions in, in the tournament. We have uh, these semis are actually kind of crazy. Tammy Wismechi is going against Maisa Bastos. Maisa has been running things that way for a while. Tammy came back after a couple years off. Tammy can beat anybody. Nogi World Champ, ADCC medalist. The other side, Grace Gundrum versus Jessica Khan. All these girls look great, uh, look pretty dominant in their in their matches. Jessica got a heel hook. What are you guys thinking about these these semifinals going into the women's 115? That's wide open too. Yep. Um, you know, I think um, I think a Grace Maisa would be a, a great rematch. Yeah. Um, I think uh, you know, if that, if that that does happen. Um, I think Grace, Jessica Khan, they've never fought, have they? They have. They, I believe Jessica they, beat her in an EBI, I believe. I think when they were they were like 13. They were young. They were, okay. I, think, yeah. I think they're one and one, and one of them was at Naga, to tell yeah, you the truth. Yeah, I, I believe Jessica <laughs> beat Grace at Naga, and <laughs> yeah. I think Grace beat Jessica at EBI or something, Okay, right? so that's pretty much irrelevant now. <laughs> yeah, um, they fought but, for uh, a Naga sword at one but point. That, that, that'll be super interesting um, to see that. I have no idea who's going to win that. Uh, Maisa versus Tammy, um, that, again, either one could win. Uh, I would give a slight advantage to Maisa just based on what I saw today and based on the fact that she's been so successful recently and Tammy has been out of competition. Um, but, again, anyone's anyone's bracket. Grace is one of my favorite competitors to watch. I was telling her coach earlier, like, she's like the Terminator. She just keeps going. Like, yes, the Terminator, yeah. he gets, he gets no shot. No facial expression. Gets, yeah, yeah, just you can't no, – no matter what you throw at her, she just keeps coming and constantly attacking, right? Yep. I mean, let's talk about these competitors too, some of these females. Like, Maisa, her flight was canceled the day before when it should have been. She had to fly in yesterday. Three girls Same in the thing with Danielle yeah. Kelly, man. Like, Danielle didn't get in last night till like, 11 p.m. we Tubby, spoke. Tubby as well. Tubby yeah. as well. You know, and this is – people don't understand how hard this is, right? Yeah. Uh, so, 
you know, credit to those girls for still competing on that travel. And so many people could have been like, oh, you know, I can't do this. And I think Maïs is a very hard girl to beat right yeah, now, man. Yeah, you know, she's yeah. phenomenal. I think as far as uh, Jessa and Grace, uh, Grace is, <laughs> she's, she's an anomaly, you know. She's yeah. phenomenal. But so is Jessa, man, you know. And, and, and I believe, uh, I, I, I wish I could say, I, I just don't even know. I'm a Jessa fan, you know. I'm, I'm always rooting for her. I think she's an awesome kid. Uh, but Grace seems to be phenomenal as well as a human. So whose jiu-jitsu is better? I think their styles are so contrasting. You know, they're so different. You know, like Grace will wrap you up, and just as constantly her Baron Bolo is just unbelievable. You know, so it's going to be really interesting. Yeah, the youngsters are sort of running this thing. There's a lot of 16, 17, 18, 19-year-olds. I think Grace and Jess are both 19. Like, the, the youngsters are really running wild the, on this tournament the, so the far. Crazy, the craziest thing is to see, like, the 16-year-old beating, like, the like the, like the, like the, like the veterans. Yeah, let's like talk about that. Year old I, I think Gio is literally more than double the age of Colbate. Let's talk about Colbate. That was one that, like, when we announced it, I mean, we all know that that's, that this kid's going to be at that level, but the fans are like, oh, blue belt, 16, what's he doing in there? This guy should be in. Colbate proved that he's legit. He went out there and beat, I mean, multiple time 80 CC veteran Gio Martinez controlled the whole match. What do you think about that one? Uh, I thought it was impressive. You know, um, I, I know Cole. Uh, he used to come to my seminars a lot, so uh, I, I know that. You know, even training him, training with him when he was like 13, he was he was tough. Um, and now he's like becoming a man. And uh, people were counting him out. And one thing that people underestimate is the element of surprise. Like if you or if you are going against like a you know an ADCC medalist or champion or black belt world champion medalist. Uh, you kind of know what to expect, but when a 16-year-old kid, a blue belt, you have no, you never, never really seen him compete nogi much. Um, don't really know much about him. Like, you can surprise. You, uh, surprise, surprise is important sometimes. Like Craig comes out in the 2017 ADCC and shocks everyone. Um, so he, he, could, he could definitely shock the world here and and, uh, and win this division. Yeah, he was getting after heel hooks and stuff. Got on Geo's back. What do you think about that performance, Tom? Man, Cole, if if Cole brings like tomorrow, what what or, or later, what he brought earlier, I think Cole could be the favorite man like if he keeps that level and that intensity and that speed and that timing that's the thing people don't realize at a high level like sometimes technique will be equal but timing is off right timing is off so cole's timing was impeccable today you know it, it was pretty incredible and, and the kid was sharp you know and i think uh I think he's going to be hard to beat, man. I really do. Absolutely. And then the other semi on the other side, you got Josh Cisneros going against Cade Rotolo. Cade Rotolo hit another Dars, really slick transition after pass. And Pato looked good, though. Pato hit a, had a tight arm bar on him in the beginning. Uh, Cisneros won by armbar, so they w both won by submission. I mean, Cade versus Cisneros, this might be the match of the tournament. These, it's like two Tasmanian devils going after each other. I don't know how they're going to do it for 15 minutes. Yeah. I have no idea how that's going to play out, but I just know it's going to be fireworks. Yep, yep, absolutely. Yeah. What do you Cade's like the most exciting guy in the game right now. Anytime he goes out there, it's match of the year mm -hmm. contender. I mean, I, I think what happens is a lot of times people think these Rotolo brothers are like, oh, you know, like they, they caught someone off guard. They caught someone off guard. They're surprising people. I don't, I don't think it's a surprise anymore. I think they're just that good, and they got that good that quick, right? They, I mean, I remember in the ADC's trials, the last ADC's trials, one of them got their, like, their leg broke, and the improvement they've made since then has been exponential. It's been oh, yeah. insane, right? Yeah. So I, I believe... Uh, you know, I don't want to count those, those Rotolo brothers out, man. You know, they're, they're, they are athletes as well. Yeah. And that, that's, that's a problem. So those, 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 those semis are crazy. Yeah, yeah, Gabriel Souza, who tapped Mikey going in. Cole, who, who beat uh, Joel, uh, Gio and predominantly. Other side, Josh Cisnero is going against K. That's pretty wild. All right, before we get out of here, we let you guys get out of here. we got less than an hour till the next session. Uh, favorite, favorite sub of session one, what do you think? Favorite sub of session one, uh, I'm going to have to pick uh, Damian Anderson getting armbarred. That was uh, probably my favorite to watch. <laughs> classic, classic Gordon Ryan there. What do you think of Tom? Oh, man. You know, I'm, I'm just going to skip out. I'm not going to say it because if I say it, I, I don't know. There's just a reason I'm not going to say it. I, uh, I have a favorite sub of today. Uh, I was impressed. I, I, I was very impressed with Tex's ability to hold on to the triangle when Orlando powered out because Orlando was a strong massive human being he's no fucking joke man and he moves like he's a small guy and uh that just proves how strong physically tex is to keep his legs locked on a slippery huge guy like that i don't know if you want to call it a submission or whatever you want to call it but just the fact that he was able to get lifted and not let go and then when he slammed he didn't let go yeah right so i think that was pretty impressive I'll go with uh, Ty, I'll, but I'll, I'll do both the Ruotolo brothers throwing Darces on because it's just so crazy. Everybody knows it's coming. They can hit this thing from anywhere, and they're just, they, it, it's like they're Stone Cold Stunner. Like, everyone knows it's coming. They go out there. They hit people with it. They got those long it's arms. Crazy. Yep, yep. I can't wait to see these semis. They're starting about less than an hour, 45 or 55 minutes at 6 o'clock Central Time. I'll get out of here, let our production go take a little food break. Thanks so much, guys. See you tonight. We'll be doing this after the, the semis as well.